welcome again to the Skill Work Forum. I'm Tim, and joined as always with my partner Brett. And this is actually the second part of a two-part series that we wanted to do that really talks about strategies for dealing with change in the workforce, something we all have to deal with. And the last part, part one of this, and I encourage you to go take a look at that, we really looked at what are the factors driving change, and we established in that that the this pace of change is, is exponentially increasing. People are changing faster, they're changing more often, and it's having a very uh, exponential effect on your employees and workforce as well. So take a look at that first uh, episode and see if you can um, maybe see some things that you've experienced in your own workplace or maybe maybe you will be as you consider implementing a change. So the second one that we're gonna follow up on, Brett, is we're gonna we're going to look at how do you actually implement successfully and manage through a change in your workplace? Because it's something not that you might have to do. You're definitely going to have mm-hmm. to do it. So this idea of change management, believe it or not, it is actually a full up discipline. It's a profession. Uh, there is a whole process. There is an accreditation. There is experts in the field of change management. So what exactly is it? I think it's always good to define when we're talking about change management. It is the methods and manners in which a company describes and implements change within both its internal and external process. So you're probably thinking, well, we've done this forever and we continue to do this. But if you think about it as a specific function, as a unique process and treat it as such, you're going to be much more successful. As I mentioned, there's accredited processes, certified change managers that you can actually bring in to your organization. Big dollar consultants are out there that you can go look at. Just Google change management support and you'll get a lot of the big name consultants that are out there doing it. You can even get a PhD in change management. I've worked with one personally before. Very smart lady, knew more about change management than you'll ever want to know incredibly detailed, a lot of psychology that goes into change management. So all that to say, it's a big deal, and there's a lot of thought that's gone into change management. So, Yep, no, for sure, Tim. And and, and I think it, it kind of speaks into, I mean, you know, you can go, holy cow, you know, who's going to hire a change management person? But but I really think it speaks into the impact, you know, that it, that it has. It's a, it's a, it's a process to, to, to be very sensitive to, to your culture and the impact to change, you know they've they've now recognized, you know I think we talked about it in the last you know episode. Fifty percent of change is a failure. Failure, and so yeah. so you know that's what you're trying to avoid. But in the event that we don't want to hire change management consultant, and for the majority, if you're a smaller company, you know like us or or a lot of small businesses, you know. You're probably not, you know, going to go out and, and have that expense or, or that type of thing. So in the face of, of a changing landscape, you know, what can leaders do on their own? You know, if you've got to manage through it on your own, which is the more typical process. So we're going to talk about, you know, just some, some tips and strategies for leading through and adapting to change, kind of to understand the psychology and process of change, there's generally three steps involved. I've talked about this as a psychological thing. Is it, you know, People naturally don't like change. It affects them at a very deep level. So you got to think through this. And so this first uh, tip that we're going to give you is the psychology. There's there's really three separate steps. And again, I've, I've studied a little bit of change management. I've had to do some. And these things are crucial. So when you're thinking about implementing a change, the first thing you want to do is really prepare Really put time and effort into the advanced forethought of what you're going to do. Begin to communicate early and often, helping employees understand what's driving this change that's coming. So you're starting to talk about it before you just gather everybody together and say, hey, we're doing this new thing. You start talking about the factors that are driving the why and, and what, what what is driving this need for change. Begin to get them to understand that these things are changing not because you just like to change things. There is a reason behind it. So we talk all the time how important it is to explain the why. Definitely crucial when you got a big change coming. You're going to change organization. You're going to bring in, you know, bring new new product line, new technology. You make sure everybody understands the why behind it. They can get behind it then at that point. So that's number one, prepare for the change. Yeah, and then, you know, the second piece of that is, you know, you can do a lot of upfront, you know, which sometimes can become the thing you know you you spend a lot of time talking about the change you spend a lot of time why we're going to change it 
but then the implementation, which is the second step, you know, is where it starts to kind of maybe fall apart a little bit right. and that, you know, but you need to treat change just like you would any other crucial project. You need to establish a schedule with milestones and kind of key deliverables so people kind of know we're not just going to show up on Monday and all this change has happened. You know, that there's a process to this of implementation. Align it with the overall vision and mission, like we talked about, that's kind of, you know, explain the why. You know, you know, hopefully your why is tied to your vision and your mission. Right. And so provide timely and continuous updates. So where are we in the process? You know, if you're, you know, the key, like with, with a lot of these things, and we've, we've talked about it here, you know, communicate, you know, you said a minute ago, Tim, communicate early and often. Well, that's going to continue through this implementation process you know people want to know you know kind of hey where are we what's the next step you know you know if you don't provide those continuous updates then people start to they'll make up their own stuff and yeah, so right. and then adjust and communicate you know along the way you know with all that so again obviously communicate 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 yeah you know and the idea of adjusting is that you put out a plan that's great but we all know that plans change and, and when you get into the reality of something so be willing to adjust Especially if you're, you know, the resistance you're feeling is more than just a natural. There's actual, you know, this is, this needs to adjust the timeline or what we're doing. So make sure you do that when you implement. The third part of this, the psychology and process of change is follow through. And, and by follow through, we mean ensure that whatever you've implemented sticks and becomes embedded in how you do things. There's this idea, I've seen it so many times. That employees that have been around for a lot of change, you know, they'll go like, yeah, just wait it out. It's just the flavor of the day. You know, the boss went to a conference or heard a podcast, like you said. Just don't put any energy or effort into really doing this. Just nod and go along with it. They'll forget about it in a few months. There's all the skepticism that is going to come. So you need to make sure you validate the change by being intentional about making sure leaders in your company continue to stick with it and voice it and be advocates for it, be change champions. It takes at least minimum six months for a significant change to begin to feel permanent. I mean, think about it, six months, you, 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 you drive to work a new, a new way from what you've been doing five years. It, it, it takes you a while to, to do that. So a big organizational change, it's going to take time. So leaders, it's crucial that you stick to it, continue to talk about it and and keep the energy behind it because people will, they'll just fall back into the old way of doing things very naturally. Mm-hmm. So, no, no, yeah, that's very, the change. It's very common. It, it, I was just speaking of a podcast from Entree Leadership, Maxwell's company, or one of his companies, and and they were talking about resistance. And it was, just, it was very interesting. It just kind of hit me, Tim, that they were talking about they had implemented some pretty significant change across the organization. And one of the leaders, he decided, well, you know, yeah, he agreed with it, he embraced it, but he, he didn't want to implement it in his department. And so they had to, so there was a resistance there. And so they had to come back and go, well, no, that doesn't, it's not, it doesn't work. It's not optional. <laughs> you know, that's not, we have to, we have to all be in this. So, you know, you have to recognize that it's natural for people to resist change, expect resistance, and don't make it personal when challenged. And at the same time, you know, I would say, Tim, uh, as leaders, we have to be careful to go, hey, just, you know, you just need to get on board. You know, if, if they're resisting, you need to try to understand why are they resisting? You know, is there is there something to that? You know, have we not communicated something correctly? So, yeah, for sure. You know, I think that gets back to that part about preparation. It's crucial that you get your Influencers, if you study change management, it'll say you've got people in your organization that are influencers and you have advocates and then you have owners. So the influencers are people that maybe don't necessarily have a title by their name, but you know if you get those people on board, the other people will follow them. They're natural leaders, they're influencers, and they can sink or swim your change. So influencers are crucial to get on board. Advocates are people that are like leaders in your company or in your organization that, you know, you, they need to be champions for change. Owners are the people at the top. They got, you've got, if you don't have your top leadership supporting your change, people will find a way around you to get to that person and, and kill the change. Mm-hmm. I've seen it happen a lot. So let's go through some more uh, tips and strategies for leading through change then. Well, I think another one is, you know, just to be honest and to over-communicate, you know, you know, to avoid 
uncertainty and fear, lack of communication. You know, we're doing a, a book study, Tim, as you know, you're going to leave this podcast and go go lead your portion of that book study, but it, it's based on the speed of trust. You know, it's Covey's book, Speed of Trust. In that, you know, that a lack of transparency, a lack of communication naturally leads to this 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 reduction in trust and it slows it slows the slows the process of the change down mm-hmm. slows your organization down so you know we always say it's it's unkind to be unclear and so you know you, this is where you need to provide a lot of clarity a lot of honest and and over communicate the plan I made this point a little earlier, and I just, this quote, you know, uh, this is a, a quote they teach in a lot of military schools. I've got a military background, but it says, no battle plan survives contact with the enemy. And what that means really is that we talked it earlier that you got to have a great plan and put it out there. As soon as you actually implement something with real people, you're going to have to adjust. So so just don't get so married to something that you're not willing to adjust. I just want to make that point. Yep. I would say that part of the communication is you need to convey this not only in a very positive way, but also couch it as an opportunity. Hey, we got a great opportunity here. It's not a negative. So the flip side of a risk is an opportunity. An opportunity is something you capture to, to make things better, to grow your company, to give people more opportunity. So I really can't say enough about adapting a positive outlook be a change agent rather than a roadblock. Zig Ziglar, one of the guys we like, you talk to Maxwell, but Ziglar famously said, your attitude determines your altitude. Mm-hmm. And your, your, your positive attitude as a advocate, as a leader, embracing this, you got to be bought in, you can't fake it, but being positive and, and couching this as terms of opportunity, which means you need to believe it as an opportunity. And if you don't fully buy into that, make sure you get a good why before you get out in front of your folks and start talking about the change. Yep. Another one is is to make sure you provide the skills and training necessary, you know, for your employees, your workforce to adjust, you know, to any new process, tool, or equipment. And so, and I would add to that, you know, if it's a technology change, for example, you know, we make them here, you know, you make a software upgrade or change software or whatever the case may be of some tool. It's not enough just to provide some training one time. It's got to be ongoing. You got to be going back. You got to be making sure that people really. Because let's be honest, if if you're putting in something new and you bring everybody in the room and you do a two-hour training process on something they've never used before, the idea that they're now experts, no, they're going to go back and they're not going to really embrace the change because they don't understand it. They don't want to look dumb, so they don't ask any questions. And 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 so you have to be intentional. In, in making sure that you've provided that training and that ongoing training. Yeah, for sure. I love that I, that, that scenario. Gather yeah, everybody in the you know in the break room, or whatever. Yeah. You know, here's a new thing. Two hours. Everybody got it. Okay, good. Seventy five percent of the people in there got nothing. Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah. you know, you got to continue to follow up and make sure people know how to use it. I don't know how many times I've had new stuff, new technology developed, and and getting you. It's called user acceptance on stuff. That is makes or breaks new stuff. Getting the people that have to use it every day to accept and use it, that is the hardest part of change management. User acceptance, and you've got to work on that. It's got to be crucial. So it kind of feeds into the next one, steady and decisive leadership. We talk here all the time. We can hire managers all day long. You know, we can, we can teach people how to manage a process. That's important. You've got to know how to manage a process. But what makes an organization great is developing leaders. And this is nothing is more... Um, hangs in the balance on in terms of strength of leadership is when you're implementing a lot of change. You got to have steady, decisive leadership. A Harvard Business School professor who I read, David Garvin, said that often the most important thing a leader can do is not identify the, the need for change, but provoke the momentum to begin and maintain the change. So he doesn't necessarily have, to be, have the idea, but the energy to keep it going and driving it in, that's where leadership really makes a huge difference. Yeah, oh. absolutely. I think you have to be, you know, we talk a lot about it, you know, I think one of the keys to leadership is is a level of self-awareness. And so in in this process, throughout this process, which I think a minute ago, Tim, you said, you know, significant change is going to take at least six months. You know, it's not it's not a six hour, six day, you know, six week. It's 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 a process and you gotta continue to follow up. And in, in that, whether it's a leader of a department, whether it's a leader of the organization, it's a facility, whatever it is, you gotta recognize and you gotta remove the roadblocks. So so you gotta to do that, you gotta be seeking continual feedback. 
you know, looking for barriers to change, you know, you know what's slowing it down? Is it people uh, and is it people that, that aren't bought in or is it people that they don't have the training? Um, is that slowing down? Is it the processes? Is it unrealistic? You know, yeah, we're going to get this done and, you know, you know, we throw out some arbitrary timeline that, right. that, that there's no way. You know, I mean, I've been in, involved in some probably the biggest nightmare of change that a lot of companies deal with is when they go through a huge software change, you know, across the organization. It's, you know, it takes forever. So they always say it's going to be seamless. Yeah. It's going to be seamless. As soon as you hear seamless, start doubting it right away. Start asking a lot of why questions. Yeah. yeah those can be, uh, I've been in situations where we, we were shipping a lot of product, but we weren't sending a lot of bills because we didn't know what we shipped. And so, so it was, that's typically not a good formula for success. No, it was, yeah, no, those were bad deals. So, um, so whatever the barrier, you know, your job is to identify and remove or, or mitigate those. So you got to again, got to stay close to it. Got to be asking a lot of questions and got to be. You can't, you know, just take an attitude. Well, you know, it just, you know, it is what it is. You know. Yeah. So you got to decide. Do you want to be in the Oh, a third approximately that are successful, or do you want to be in the fifty plus percent that are failures? And ask yourself that going in because you spent a lot of time, energy, and resources making change. So do your homework up front. Think about these things. You can send some of your leaders that are going to be the project managers for a change through training for change management. It is a discipline. It's a lot of stuff you can learn that will help you a lot. So summarize both of these two podcasts that that we talked about managing change and and strategies for dealing with change in the workforce. Just to summarize, listen, change is inevitable. We know that. We embrace change around here all the time. It's happening more frequently and at a faster pace. That's a fact. Managing change is arguably the most important task you have as a leader. I'd say besides setting vision, direction, managing your organization through change is probably the most important thing you do as a leader. The third thing is plan accordingly Execute the plan, adjust and adapt as necessary, and make sure always answer the why. You know, why are we doing it? Make sure you know the why and you're bought into it. So over communicate. And finally, great leaders navigate change better than others. The difference between a company that thrives and grows and those that don't are I, you look at it, you your Harvard Business Review does a lot of postmortems on companies that fail. And you know, a lot of them, basically, they did a, they made a bad decision or they implemented change in a very reckless way. So it's a learned behavior. Equip yourself and, and get ready for a change because it's coming and it's coming fast. So that's it. That's the summary. Uh, we appreciate you being with us today, Brett. Great insight from you, as always. Remember, we always like to mention the partners we have in this podcast and good friends of ours, Texas Boys Outdoors, Roy Crush and the guys amazing story check it out on the pursuit channel they're growing that that brand they do a lot of great things for military first responders special needs kids get them out in the great outdoors uh, we love what they do and we're proud to be a, a title sponsor of that show the other thing is we have another podcast here called the proud skilled worker where it's it's really from the perspective of our skilled tradesmen or craftsmen what are they seeing what are they feeling maybe a good topic for that coming up i'll, I'll maybe recommend how do you deal with change from mm -hmm. your perspective? So that might be a good one. So that's it. Again, thanks. Uh, any final words, Brett, before we sign off today? No, I mean, just, you know, as always, we appreciate you, you joining us. Like, like Tim said, I think he summed it, it well, you know, as, as leaders, setting vision, you know, keeping everybody, you know, focused on the why, and but then managing change because it is inevitable. And, and how you manage through that is going to have a huge impact on your culture. And so something we definitely, you just don't want to take lightly and, and kind of force it. So, but yeah, yeah great, great topic. Yep. Thanks. And uh, again, appreciate the time with us today. Until next time, God bless.